Hey, this is Sasha, and thanks for joining me for another episode on Hungry for Returns, where I answer your trading and investing questions on the stock market uh, for my own past successes and stupid mistakes that I've done. So today we have a question that's uh, regarding selling options premium and holding the stock. Um, if you have a specific question that you want to ask me, it'll take you probably less than 30 seconds. Check out the website, submit a question, record it by voice, and you're good to go. And you might be featured on the show. So. Anyway, let's take a listen here real quick and then I'll go ahead and answer it for you. Uh, before we do that, I do want to let you know, uh, let's pop it in there, uh, Options Mastery Calendars course. We got a handful of days to go. So if you're interested in getting the course you want, 20 plus hours of uh, trading um, knowledge and insights of learning on calendars, uh, check out this course. It's got five days left until the sale as I'm recording this video. So once this video is released, probably be one or two days left to go so check it out it's on sale it's on special it's on discount which i normally don't do if you're interested on it head on over rise the number two l-e-a-r-n dot com head on over to courses option trading courses go to the calendars course and that one you also can check out some sample clips so let's take a listen to our current question about selling options premium and you'll uh, get some more insight here so let's go to the audio Hey Sasha, my name's Sean. Uh, I've been trading options for a couple months and what I'm actually trading is options premiums. And my question is, when trading options premiums, at what point do I decide to keep the contract and fulfill the contract, actually buy the 100 shares or however many shares? Um, new to the channel, love what you do, keep it up. Thank you. All right. So let me answer this question pretty simply. Uh, overall, when you have the knowledge of trading options and you learn more about trading options, you will never need to buy the stock. I know that may seem a little weird to say because all of investing is based on buying stock, but the more and more you know about trading options, eventually you won't need to buy the stock. And I'll show you why here in this example. So. Uh, usually when you're just getting started you kind of always think hey this is the way they work and that's why I need to buy the stock but the reality is you don't need to the the one time I do recommend you buy the stock um, is when you're not really looking to actively manage a position let's say you want a crock pot recipe set it forget it let's say I want to buy 100 shares for my kids I just want to hold it in a certain stock buy another 100 next year buy another 100 next year or 50 or 10 or whatever and then you're not thinking about it maybe you know 10 20 years down the line you got your dividends and you're good to go um, the other thing is is if you have a major thing in your life let's say you just had kids when you have kids I know sometimes you got to stop trading for a couple months until you recalibrate your compass figure out the dynamics of the household maybe when you're sick with an illness I got a buddy you know you're in bad car accident or something hey sometimes you take some time off till you figure things out because uh, you're mentally unclear uh, but other than that normally you don't need to hold the stock and I'll show you why here okay so in this case when we take a look here um, Microsoft for example uh, a typical approach would be if you're a long-term investor I'm gonna go ahead and analyze this stock uh, you know you make money as the stock goes up and you lose money let me get rid of this you lose money as the stock goes down right so that's a typical risk profile picture meaning you make money as it goes up you lose money as it goes down now that of course depends when you sell and when you buy but overall the value of it when it gets to 90 you're down because right now it's at 102 right now when you sell options premium let's take a different one let's take um, HOG just because it's, I don't have a sample position on that one when you go ahead and sell option premium on this let's say uh, this one again we'll go ahead buy you'll see same concept okay you make money as it goes up lose money as it goes down if I sell option premium right let's say I sell it at 32 and a half so I'm selling I'll sell a single here uh, this risk profile now is basically I make money as it goes up or stand still or I'm collecting that theta for this one contract um, as long as the price stays above that 32 and a half, right? Of course, I could do five contracts if I wanted to, and then I make $5.82 every day. Um, I could do less contracts, uh, but in this case, when you're selling puts, you're basically going to get assigned that stock if it goes below that. When you think of it this way, well, why can't you define 
you know, just like in a stock, as, as a stock moves down, you lose value, right? So in theory, you would have to rebuy your stock every 30 days if that stock expired. So in this case, let's say every time you go ahead and you're looking to make, um, in this case, $155 every single month. Well, let's say this gets down to about uh, 186. Well, every time it hits, if you're looking to keep that stock for 10 years, well, every, every time it goes down to 186, you go ahead and sell again another five contracts. But now again, when it goes lower, you would sell it over here, right? And then if it keeps going, you sell it again over here. Because if you had a stock and you had a long-term investment, well, otherwise it would just keep going down, it would keep going down, it would keep going down anyway. Your value would still be going down, right? Whereas with this one, the difference is you could still be making money some of the months if that premium stays kind of above your sweet spot. So you could go ahead and um, you know wait and get a sign, but the problem with that is you're dealing with much more capital. So you're, you're structuring right here the premium amount. This is a cash secured put that you're selling. It's pretty expensive. The alternative for this, take a look at this, right? You have long delta you're long the stock so what's an alternative for this diagonal when you do a diagonal let me do one on Netflix just because it's got a little more strikes on here easier to teach let's say we buy a diagonal okay and I'll do 142 days out so that'll be the one I sell and the one I'll buy will be 76 days out and that'll be April so here we'll do this diagonal, get rid of some of these, so not to confuse you, okay. We'll go here to the 345 and the 350, and now take a look. How is this, right? When you look at, when you look at a long-term investment or when you look to buy a stock, typically people do that for a longer-term investment. In that case, you're looking for stock price appreciation. You're looking for long exposure, which also means long delta, and you get hurt when stock prices go down. So you have risk in one direction, uh, meaning when stocks go down, you lose money. When stocks go up, you make money. In this case, when you do a long diagonal, this gives you the same type of exposure. Look at the graph, right? The only difference here is you're dealing with vega, which is positive. So as this goes down, this tent will actually get bigger, which helps you. In a stock, it won't. Uh, if you just buy an individual stock but with an option, it actually will help you. And in this case, you don't have that unlimited profit potential. But in rare cases, how often does a stock do that anyway? It doesn't do that that often. So uh, in this case, what you would do if you wanted to build a long-term portfolio instead of trading the stock, you would just do these diagonals and you would do them every month. You'd put them on, you could do them every two, three months. Um, and you could, what's interesting is as you see the market slowing down or speeding up, you could rotate these a little more or a little less. Now, because you're leveraged with this, I wouldn't trade the same amount of capital. You would trade, you know, look at, look at the delta. Like let's say here, if the stock gets to 310, you lose about $600. So compare that as well with the stock, right? So if you don't want to lose more than $600, and here, let's say I'm buying, analyze okay let's say 100 shares the stock here 310 i'd lose three thousand dollars well think of it this way well to own this stock you got to put up a lot more cash you know um whereas with the option contract you got to put up a lot less cash so if you're trading here 10 shares all right let's take out a calculator for you if you want to see it um just for some people 10 times 341 Okay, you're looking at $3,410, okay? So if that's what you wanna spend, I wouldn't do that on an option because here, look at it, um, 3,000, let's say 3,700 now. Well, if it goes down and it goes down too far to 310, you're losing half of that money, right? So, cause your percentages now become elevated since you're kind of leveraged a little bit. So instead you would trade maybe a third. So let's say one contract and now you're only losing about 600. So in this case, what you would do is, okay, well, I'd put this on every 30 days, something like this. If you don't wanna be skewed as far, you could, let's say, go 320 and 340 or even 330 right here. So you got a little protection. 
Uh, so you get a little more cushion on the room. It's still long exposure. Um, and as this goes down, let's say, okay, you're down $100. Okay, every $100, you go ahead and you reset this thing, and now you put it on right here. Then it keeps going. Again, put another one on right here because if you're dealing with stock, it's no different because when you're dealing with a stock, well, the only difference is, is well, with a stock, you're just holding and it's wiggling here. Okay, if it goes down, well, you would just re-get the stock right there. It goes down, you would just re-get the stock right there, and it would be the same concept. So anyways, I would never really own the stock if you're dealing with options um, until you start learning and understanding the strategies. Uh, so you don't really need to do that uh, because it's just inefficient use of capital unless, of course, you just want to set it and kind of forget it. If you want to set it and forget it, nothing wrong with that. It's, you know, personal lifestyle, then you don't have to watch it. You don't have to manage it. You just buy some every month, every three months, every six months. You buy a little more, buy a little more, and you keep adding to your position. But if you're actually trading actively, um, then if you're understanding the way the options work, you don't really necessarily have to buy the stock. And especially if you're selling, um, you know, a single, like let's say uh, here on the put side and you're thinking, okay, when do I actually take it? When do I actually get the stock? Or the call side, the same thing. Um, you should never really have to do that. Instead, what typically people do is do the verticals, like you might sell the vertical and then, um, and then you can cut your capital use in half to where you don't need a cash secured put. So instead of doing an individual put, you actually have to secure it with all that cash to be able to buy the stock. Whereas if you just buy a put further out, say 245 even, you cut your margin requirement by a lot. So um, that's the way I would do it and approach it. Um, but of course it takes a little more knowledge and know-how and education. And for, you know, a couple of bucks or a couple hundred bucks, you know, you can check out one of these courses that'll teach you a lot more about options. So take a look. Sometimes it's worthwhile because then you can have a lot more cash on your reserve or usage uh, to make a better use and efficient use of capital. So check out our course if you want. It's, it helps me out uh, because um, and then I'm able to take those profits, whatever we make from here, pay the team to be able to edit videos and produce more videos and content for you. That's also even free content. Um, and it helps you out because you learn a lot more from the material. It's 20 plus hours, which most courses are, you know, a couple hours at most. So you're definitely going to get a lot more uh, out of it. And it goes in detail. And you can check that out at risetolearn.com. All right. So thank you so much for joining me. If you have a specific question, you can click one of the links below, write in, submit one by voice, and uh, get an answer within, you know, uh, less than 30 seconds. You submit your question, you get an answer in a couple weeks at most. And that way, you know more, you learn more, and you become better. All right, thanks for joining me, and I hope to see you next time.